any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. That the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. There's so many different organizations that are affected with mind control that we cannot be misled into believing that it's just one particular group of people or another. We can't even say that this is Democrats or Republicans. No. This has nothing to do with party lines. What it has to do with is a new world order agenda. When I was under mind control, before I was rescued and my mind and my memory restored, I was totally robotic. I had no ability to think for myself. I had no ability to question or to reason. I could only do exactly what I was told to do. One thing that I was told to do was to attend a White House cocktail party. This was during the Reagan-Bush administration while Ronald Reagan was president. It was on, this, on one occasion in particular that I heard Ronald Reagan talking with then Prime Minister of Canada, Brian Mulroney, who was also involved in this New World Order effort. And he said at that time that he believed the only way to world peace is through mind control of the masses. This is terrifying in proportion, especially when Having experienced mind control, I know that there is no peace of mind under mind control. Without free thought, there's no free will. Without God-given free will, there's no spiritual expression. And I wonder, what kind of a so-called world peace can we have where people have no peace of mind, where they have no spiritual expression, when they have no, when they're not even in touch with their own identity or it's, it's very frightening in proportion when we consider the ramifications of what all mind control entails and how anyone can justify a robotic society under the so-called world peace guise, which is actually the new world order, world dominance. It's my experience that Ronald Reagan took orders directly from George Bush. George Bush was one of the highest up that I'm aware of, if not the highest up that I was ever exposed to during the course of my White House Pentagon level mind control victimiz victimization. George Bush began with the United Nations. He went on to head our CIA. And then by everything that I witnessed and experienced, it was George Bush who was in control of our country through three administrations because Ronald Reagan answers to George Bush. Then George Bush was in office himself. And after that, Bill Clinton went into office. And I heard Bill Clinton and George Bush once discussing the, how when the American populace became disillusioned with Republicans in, in control of our country, bringing us into the new world order, that Bill Clinton, as a Democrat, would be put into office. And it was also my experience to have witnessed Bill Clinton answering to George Bush. So we certainly aren't um, blaming everything on George Bush. There's a lot of other players that are named in our book, Transformation of America. But it's very important that people understand who's at the top of this effort so that they know exactly what the problem really is. Absolutely. Instead, it was a very natural process in one regard when he rescued my daughter, Kelly, and I in 1988. Kelly and I were safe for the first time. We weren't being hurt in any way. We saw how Mark was, was very gentle with his animals. His pets loved him, which was highly unusual for us. Everyone that we'd ever known abused their animals. It seems that abuse of animals and abuse of children oftentimes goes hand in hand. But nevertheless, we felt safe for the first time. And we developed a trust for Mark. This trust factor was very significant in the recovery process because it was when we felt this kind of trust that the memories of what had happened to us all those years under mind control began flashing across our mind's screen. And Mark taught me how to, to write out my memories, to journal them, to put them on paper. I was extremely fortunate 
to be able to accurately recall all those things that I'd photographically recorded under mind control, particularly on the White House Pentagon level. This information that I was able to remember as a result of, of Mark's expertise is what's been documented in our book, Transformation of America. My daughter Kelly was not so fortunate. Once she began remembering, she went into a respiratory failure and was hospitalized in Humana Hospital in Anchorage, Alaska. It was through a series of, of uh, well-orchestrated events by some some of her politically affluent abusers that thrust Kelly into the custody of the state of Tennessee, where she remains a political prisoner to date. Kelly is denied rehabilitation due to who and what she knows is involved in MK Ultra mind control, due to who and what she knows is involved in her personal victimization. Kelly is waiting the day that good people will join voices and be effective in taking back our government and getting these secrets that have been covered up under national security so released. So-called so called, uh, national yeah. security. So that, so that she can be helped. This blanket of national security is certainly threatening the security of our nation when it covers up such horrible crimes as have been perpetrated against humanity by those in control of our government. 